Hey everybody, my name is Marty and I work with Sideways 8 here in Atlanta and uh, we primarily build marketing websites and um, I'm not so good at marketing so fortunately I just get to do plug-in work and development with them. Um, and so, as we all know, uh, Gutenberg is a big thing that's coming to WordPress and is um, purported to change everything according to the developers of Gutenberg. Has um, anybody in here had a chance to use Gutenberg? Raise your hand. Cool. Um, so, I guess uh, let's just go into this. Um, so historically, um, sorry, uh, this is my first talk and just got a wave of anxiety. I don't know if anybody has to deal with that. <laughs> That's right. Right. Okay. So, so, um, <laughs> oh man, I do apologize. Um, no, 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 I'm, I'm good. Um, yeah, so, yeah, let me just go back. So, according to citation needed, before the printing press, books were handwritten. The process was really slow and expensive. Um, the power to write books resided mostly in the religious and monarchy systems in old Europe. So you had to be wealthy, educated, and basically in the Illuminati to even have access to information. <laughs> so it was a really close thing. Um, prior to the printing press, there was no consistency and in information anywhere. Like, nobody had the same thing. Any book was duplicated and handwritten, uh, mostly by monks. Um, so then the Black Death basically wiped out Europe, and so the educated elite um, dispersed over time. The cost of books to, to have them manually reprinted um, was extraordinary. And then so along comes Gutenberg, who took pre-existing tools and developed the movable type printing press. And the impact of that um, brought about the scientific revolution in Europe um, and also really shifted the power struggle away from the ruling class and democratized information and made it public. So I thought um, the project name for whenever you're going to write a code is interesting because typically it's not arbitrary. And um, so it sounded really ambitious to me because um, um, from a quote from, I'm bad with names, but Matt, the dude who wrote Faith of WordPress, WordPress. Um, according to him, it's time for WordPress's next big thing. That, that thing helps us deal with the challenges and opportunities, the thing that changes the world. And uh, so, so when I hear that kind of talk, you know, it sounds really flowery, marketing kind of words. It's like, you know, we all use WordPress. Is it really going to change the world? Um, so, so anyways. That's like my initial skepticism and um, just getting into Gutenberg because there's such a big sales pitch right from the get-go and what we have today to look at is really minimal. Like if you install Gutenberg, you get what would appear to be a really lame page builder. Um, so, so yeah, you know, the first steps, you want to go and download the plugin because it's not available and it's in rapid development. And although I've been doing what I can to keep up with it, I'm definitely not a comprehensive expert, but um, 
have been able to walk through and figure out some basics. So if you're going to install it, you want to install it to a test server, not a production server. Um, the roadmap seems more finalized with every release and the code looks pretty stable, but there's no telling what could or could not come out between now and release time. But um, so I think we're at WordPress 4.9.5, and so 5 is definitely has to be close. When that does come, um, Gutenberg ships with WordPress, and it's part of core at that time. Um, so back to the bad page editor. Um, installing Gutenberg actually replaces the post.php um, back in entirely. So uh, what you're used to, you know, everybody's seen the one on, on the left. Um, and, you know, this is what WordPress has been working with um, at, at least 10 years now. Um, and this goes back to how we've always had to make HTTP requests over the Internet. So this form, when you load the current page, um, the whole page is just a form wrapped inside of this HTML form. You hit submit, your post goes back to WordPress and the data is processed. Um, you know, so that technology has been around since the 90s. And um, nothing wrong with it. You know, it works perfectly well for most things, but um, It's uh, certainly not the way of the future. Um, yeah, so you save post. Um, so the new interface is, uh, again, a total replacement. So the old editor is gone. There's no form tag. This is a dynamic JavaScript user interface that is built with React.js. Um, that's an open source um, application sort of framework for JavaScript. Um, so Gutenberg introduces a new concept to WordPress which are called blocks and the intention of blocks are to unify what would otherwise have to be accomplished with something like short codes or writing a custom plugin or a widget or a menu. Really most of the current WordPress concepts is attempting to unify and replace with a singular API. So you have basically a c way to control any part of WordPress ultimately is the intention with blocks. Um, so what's different too is when you save data um, in the new editor, it actually works with the um, WordPress JSON API. Um, and it's totally compatible with that, which is pretty cool because that decouples the need for WordPress, the backend, and the server to necessarily be on one place or one server. So, yeah, data can communicate over the API in that fashion. Um, the screen here is uh, basically... Uh, two important bits. There's the content editor, and then there are the advanced control region on the right-hand side. Um, at, at a glance, it really doesn't look any different than the old page necessarily. Um, we have what, so there's a meta box conversion. If you have meta boxes that don't update the document object model, so it say if it was you know just a traditional form tag or something. Um, those theoretically compatibility should should be working inside of Gutenberg. If if you're doing something tricky like you know clicking on something and then hiding another form or value or something, those probably aren't going to work out of the box, unfortunately. Um, Um, right, so when you install Gutenberg, you have this um, interesting little widget box here. 
Um, has anybody used page builders before? Right. Um, I thought this was interesting. We use uh, Beaver Builder a lot at Sideways, Sideways 8, and um, the block interface, it basically looks like they ripped them off, but um, <laughs> um, that is WordPress copied um, Beaver Builder, but I mean, it could just be a design thing, but like, I mean, I mean they do basically look identical. Um, so another change with blocks because the fundamental shift that's happening here really is how WordPress is treating the post content field. So keeping in mind with how it's always been, you just have the form, so you have your post title, post content, and then the other meta attributes that get updated. Um, all the content is actually um, still just old static HTML that sits, you know, in one block. Um, going forward, that's not the case. It, we're taking the content and giving it um, data structures through blocks. So, uh, kind of hard to see here, but um, so what's happening here, if you can see on the right screen, there's a block up at the top that says cool paragraph block and an image block right below it. That markup gets stored into post content with the definition of the WP colon, it's the block name, and the options are stored as a JSON object um, embedded straight into the code. So this is interesting because um, it's introducing a new way to categorize and articulate data within this same embedded structure. So um, this opens up like a lot of possible opportunities because take going forward, right? Like WordPress right now, this is just a website and it's being served online, but say if you had a mobile app that was native to interpret these markup structures, I would see it really being possible in the future to have um, basically like WordPress adapters that read and like articulate data that's meaningful to the particular device that it's on. Um, and I think that's sort of what the intention is when they say that they're going to change everything is that they're treating um, like the idea of the post is going away or page. So the page will be a collection of structured objects or a post will be you know, a collection of structured objects as opposed to the traditional way where you go in and you just make a custom post type and we like, like if we're gonna have a book post type It'll have properties like an author or publisher, these sorts of details. Um, blocks will give us the ability to have all that inside the block itself. Um, um, no, no, the blocks won't create the post type, but the way that we've historically used post types, I feel like may be changing in the future because when you turn on Gutenberg, right, um, the editor is applied automatically to posts and pages, which kind of blurs the distinction, I think, between the two. Because if you have a page, but it's really just composed of blocks, and you have a post, it's also just composed of blocks. Um, it really depends on how you're using the data structures that are necessary to you, because Right now, like I'm saying, we, if you had the custom post type in a book, for example, and you wanted to tie that to another piece of data, um, you know, you'd have to make the post type and do all that. But since it's just a block, the block itself has the structure within it that would say it's an author or a book and then contain that metadata. And then that's embedded within a post. So 
I'm not 100% sure what the implications are for that. It just is definitely modular, modularizing what currently exists in the post content. So um, I, I don't think post types are going away, for example. So um, we have the shared blocks, which are uh, basically a global state. So if you change it here, it'll change anywhere else on the site. And the way that works under the hood is um, a new post actually gets created with the WP block post type. And so that post itself um, you know, is individual. And then there are just references to the post type. Um, I'm sorry, back to, to the block itself. Um, Sorry? Is it going to shorten or lengthen the back end code? Um, uh, so, <laughs> uh, probably both. <laughs> <laughs> like, because uh, like, what's, what's going to happen, I mean, the, you know, there will be gaining advantages and then probably learning new territory and then having to. Um, so what, what code do you work with primarily, PHP or JavaScript? Right. So that's going to be a big change for most developers because WordPress has always been, you know, hardcore PHP. But this is 100% JavaScript. The only PHP involved here is registering the block definitions which load the JavaScript files. So if you plan on working with blocks, um, JavaScript's going to be mandatory. So if that Historically, is like outside of your work set. Um, uh, unfortunately, that's one of the things that yeah. you're going to have to do. Um, but um, <coughs> so, if you do work with JavaScript, the block system and React itself. Um, have you, has anybody worked with React? Right. So. Um, Basically, it's, it's like a, a framework that lets you have living applications on the page or whatever, and it has dynamic state, and, um, and every piece is a block composed of another more modular piece. Um, so, so if you use uh, the jump, well, let's, let's skip to that, because I have an example later. I think I've already said that one. Um, so, so yeah, I'm gonna go over uh, how what we actually go about creating a block. Um, and so, I would recommend basically cheating. Um, you know, I'll go back to that. But uh, so there is a package that's written in Node JavaScript called Create Guten Block, and you can install this. And what it does will actually compile a Gutenberg block framework. So um, I have this installed here. Um, OK. So on my uh, project here, I have Gutenberg. That's the plugin in this WordCamp block. Um, this is what the plugin will actually spit out when you run the command create Gutenberg block. Seems uh, alt tabbing has freaked out the computer. Um, but anyway, so the basic process is that you install this tool. And I mean, you, you could create, go about it manually, but the process is really repetitive. And the official documentation recommends this particular plugin anyways. So, um, So 
So you want to go to the actual plugin directory, which we had pulled up. I had it installed to our, you know, just plugins. Um, you run this command, create guten block, um, then whatever, you know, you want to call it. The command will run, and it actually builds our generator, and we get a new plugin installed to WordPress that we can go in and install or activate. Um, the main file <coughs> is this init.php, which is inside of our source directory. Um, and like I was saying earlier, all this does is actually enqueue the JavaScript assets. So we enqueue our block assets and block editor assets. So what that means is um, we have to enqueue uh, control JavaScript that works with the editor in the background, as well as code that handles the front end um, rendering. Um, let's skip to here. So our main file is um, this Gutenberg blocks file. So this is our main entry point. So npm start, that's the script that ships with uh, 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 the create Gutenberg block plugin there. Um, and so, so basically we just have to run that and we are actively building and listening for changes to our scripts here. So the block is uh, this file here. And uh, the commenting is really great on here. Um, so uh, definitely helpful. But so what's happening is our block definition, we're loading style. Um, uh, and so this is cool. The project comes bundled with a SAS compiler and everything out of the box. So you don't have to configure anything. Um, and you can just work with uh, SAS or other preprocessors if you like them. Um, this is our international is language function, so if you use translations in WordPress, they'll also work with Gutenberg um, out of the box. The, the function is basically the same, it's um, the double underscore and open and then your language and then um, the text domain. So. The main function here is register block type. Um, this is how we actually define what our block is going to be called. So the title, icon, and category and keywords, these will affect So yeah, so those parameters um, affect what this uh, block definition here is. So we could uh, change it to whatever. We save and that should rebuild. Yeah, so it listens to changes and recompiles automatically. Um, so our next function here is edit. So edit, um, actually refers to this mode here. So we have the block here. Um, so JavaScript actually has to define the HTML that's going to be printed out when you add in a block. So we have our editor block, and whatever's in this um, code here will change how the block gets rendered here on the back end. Um, the save function um, 
it looks identical, but what it does is actually uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So the save function, it is the function that turns the code back into the markup that we saw, where it's the quoted wp colon block name and the attributes. Um, the attributes are pulled out with um, uh, CSS selectors. Um, I thought I had a link to that, but I may not. Um, yeah, so essentially that's it. Um, this, yeah, the save function will update what gets displayed back on the front end. Um, so if you install Gutenberg and you depend on page builders, that's probably who's most likely going to have the biggest issues going forward because um, page builders also typically embed content into uh, uh, post content field. So there's going to be competing actions between the two. And uh, um, so that's going to depend on the page builder. And um, I don't know what the answer is for each page builder. Um, but basically, the answer right now is no, and it's the responsibility of um, those plugin developers to make it compatible. I know Beaver Builder is, um, they're definitely trying to make it compatible. And I assume, just for market's sake, that the rest of page builder companies will do that as well. Um, because as far as I can tell, this change is definitely coming. It's not, it doesn't seem like something's going to break the community in half. And um, specifically, um, again, I can't even remember his name, but Matt that wrote uh, WordPress, he said there's not going to be a version of WordPress that doesn't support um, this mechanism going forward. So there is no backwards compatibility for this. So it seems like it could be putting the page builders out of business essentially. Um, so, so market competition is definitely a huge incentive to this project because um, all the page builders do a better job. Like, okay. um, but I, I don't think it's their intention to put them out of business at all. Um, It just, um, the change is coming and the updates will have to be gradual in response from the community. But, um, I mean, I think it's in the page builder developer's interest to like make it compatible anyways, because that's everybody's business. Um, but so, so another thing, I don't think like Gutenberg is intended to be a page builder. Um, again, it just sort of looks that way because it looks like they copied Beaver Builder. Um, so the, the intention, the editor is only phase one, according to the Gutenberg team. Ultimately, they want all of WordPress to work the way it does with the block system. So, um, no, there's always gonna be PHP for processing that happens inside of WordPress, but um, so, so, so f for example, you know, if you're writing a custom plugin, you're still going to have to write the PHP that does all the database processing or any of that, but in terms of uh, developing for the interface, yes, is primarily going to be JavaScript. And um, 
I'm sorry? Well, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Um, uh, I would go to the official React website. I wouldn't say it's necessarily important to learn React in order to work with Gutenberg. Um, if you've worked with any kind of um, like state system, they all sort of work the same, like a model view um, controller and update mm -hmm. callback. Um, but yeah, otherwise the architecture will be, yeah, yeah, there's really not a way around. You have to, you have to learn uh, JavaScript and React probably. No, so so uh, the work will happen outside of the plugin. Okay. Um, so Gutenberg, when it integrates, won't be a plugin in this capacity. It'll be part of the core. And so uh, what we have is um, this. Uh, this so the package definition here is set up to read the blocks from Gutenberg. So this build file has access to all of the Gutenberg components. Um, so like if we just look. Well, that's not gonna help us, we should read the repository for those. Um, so I don't know if I have a, an example here, but Um, so, no, I, I don't have an example, but they have a, there's a color picker component, for example, in part of Gutenberg, um, and that exists on the right-hand control side. In fact, like, let's, um, pull that up. So, yeah, our right-hand controls over here, um, essentially all of these are reusable in a context that um, would make sense. So these uh, this is a color picker module component. And um, so there's a component file inside Gutenberg and that's all it does is manage this color thing. Um, and you pass like the title attribute and a callback to how that's supposed to apply. And so this would like link back to the JavaScript file and we would tell it to read the color picker component and then do some action when you click on a color. So if we click red, um, there's an event that fires so that we know that we clicked on a color and then we can do an action and update our block accordingly. I'm, I'm kind of like concerned about my current sites. Oh, yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, so, so that's, uh, yeah, um, there's an official plugin, um, and the name escapes me, but. Yeah, it, yeah, it's um, like, yeah, it, so you can basically just disable the interface. You have to put a plugin to disable Yeah, yes, yeah. When five ships, classic you. Editor. Yeah, that's it, that's classic. it, classic that's editor. The name of it? It's classic called Classic Editor. editor. And uh, it'll just force the old editor going forward, um, which will probably work for a while. But I would say your lifetime on that is like a year to it most because, like, because yeah, because like the the community and core is well. I can't speak. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, there are a couple comments that were like they would answer some of that question, then I have like 15 questions for you and I'll try to uh, limit it. Yeah, uh, I mean, let's let's the, go into questions. The beaver, the beaver builders and all of those, I don't use page builders, but I've just been like obsessively researching all of this, oh my God, what's coming down and how's it gonna affect the sites that are already out there. They supposedly are embracing it. I would not be surprised to see them do what they've done with WordPress and build on that. So I'm less worried about that. The um, a question about the plugin, I, I just turned it on for a minute on my live site and when I converted to blocks, it, it broke something. I mean, I'm concerned mm -hmm. about that, but I know we're gonna get down the road a little bit, so it's gonna be different. But 
Is the plug-in the same experience as Gutenberg? Like, am I, am I? Is yeah, yeah, thing? so, yeah, what, yeah. So the Gutenberg plug-in is actively developed, they're pushing updates, like, daily, and uh, that plug-in is what the experience is gonna be. Okay, and then the other question that's a huge concern is, we talk, or we or Matt talked about how Gutenberg is going to, you know, kind of democratize everything, and this is great because what we're doing now, whether it's us or our clients, is we're giving people this big block of white editor space and we can't do the fancy pants thing. To your point about um, ripping off the Beaver Builder, I haven't been to Beaver Builder, but I, when I opened it up, it was like, oh, this looks like Squarespace. So it's kind right, of right. a common thing. Mm -hmm. But what happens with most page building, sites built on page builders, whether you're talking about Divi, Beaver, blah, 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 is code bloat, and I'm a hack, not a, no, I don't code that much anymore, so I don't mm. know, is this gonna bloat the code such that those of us that don't have crazy fast servers and optimize out the wazoo and blah, blah, is it gonna kind of bump everybody down to this, oh, well, you don't have our corporate blah, blah, blah resources, so everybody that's on WordPress is gonna be down here with, with uh, Huge page page load times. Um, yeah, I'm. Yeah, that's what I mean. Not like the back end code because I work a lot with website speed optimization. And if you're not down there in two or three seconds, you know, give me a Divi mm -hmm. site. I'm, I mean, crazy. That, so, that's those are hit far yeah. Far um, so to your point on all that, I don't know if optimization has necessarily been worked into the equation for what's going on. Um, yes, it will add um, markup mm -hmm. and potential bulk, bulk into the code. Um, there's no reason uh, the structures can't be minified and compressed in some way. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like that's probably something that's going to have to be addressed as the issue arises and persists as people go forward, because it, it definitely could possibly um, have an effect on speed. I think most people don't even know they have that problem when they're using the Well, because it's using JSON API, it's pulling data not from the database. So that a part of speed is grabbing that data. So it from might the be database. some give and take, you think? Yeah, so I think because it's now using JSON API, that it's going to pull the data back a little bit faster. That would right. be my assumption. Well, uh, so, yeah, so. <laughs> When, when you save the file, it, it rebuilds the markup and saves it back to the database. So you have your HTML markup and you also have the JSON structure that wraps what the markup would be. So um, I, it really could go either way. It doesn't necessarily have to be... So, so I mean, I could see like if they continue to use blocks in a way that WordPress, like you're customizing the other portions of it, and if you only have the necessary guts in the post content, you know, I mean, it's hard for me to say what the actual impact would be. Like I, I can't see it causing a huge deal, but. Um, I haven't thoroughly tested it, you know. It so. seems to me that caching plugins should be thinking about being compatible with Gutenberg, and then they cache that final right. markup of the page like they usually do. And, you know, that's something that's typically used in. Right, but so many people don't really realize that that they need to be doing this, and you can always optimize any well. I can optimize any site downward, but that doesn't necessarily mean any site can load in just like a couple or three seconds. Like somebody came to me with the Divi example, and I mean, it was huge, and I got it down to like six seconds instead of 17, but that's bad. So that's, yeah, that's, I feel like that's a problem with WordPress. Like, um, and so, so if you're making a theme and you're custom building it, you could, you know, like hypothetically get it down to just like one or two JavaScript files and minified CSS in like 
totally optimize your build, but um, that's kind of impossible with page builders because there's no way not to get that extra bloat because you know you're adding column structures and then sub units and um, yeah, that's 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 a challenge in general. Like uh, I I don't think that they're addressing that right now, so. I think it's just something that we're going to have to deal with going forward. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it should help WordPress remain relevant in the future. I feel like that's really why they're doing it because um, in, on, in his uh, blog post, um, he referred to Wix and Squarespace as their competitors in the visual building respect and, uh, yes? So I guess when people say they were about Divi, right? Like isn't that Divi's problem to build like a better system that integrates with Gutenberg? Because, and I guess I want you to speak from your experience because we both use Beaver Builder, right? Yes. Um, when I install Beaver Builder, I disable like a lot of modules, right? Because like some of the modules, I don't want clients throwing sliders wherever they want. I don't want clients throwing certain things wherever they want. And you can disable by certain post types. So I won't allow people to learn the post post type if they have 5,000 posts because it might bloat it, right? Or like with ACF. So are you planning like your own way to like, you know, Gutenberg's own, you know, WordPress it's, at the core is going to run with like 30 blocks, right? And so isn't it like, are you planning any way to limit your clients or to like help them scope it so they just don't like end up with like 500 different blocks and that will cause the bloat? Um, yeah, I think there has to be a degree of hand-holding um, at really the best thing I, I could think is like you develop a template for them and try to lock them into it um, because I mean it's always a problem when like clients are going in and messing with it <laughs> but um no, I, I don't think you can like take care of that with like code responsibility. It, it's, it has to be like manual intervention and like making sure people aren't doing that. Um, I mean, there's probably uh, ways to cut out access to it. Um, I know you can predefine how the editor works per custom post type, so you can, you can, yeah, you can definitely filter out blocks. Um, but just just as like general practice, like that's like more work on me as opposed to trying to educate the person to not do that. Um, so yeah, that's that's just another one of those case by case things. When you create a custom Gutenberg block, are you putting it in a template file, or would you recommend creating a plugin? Um, yeah, so, so that's actually um, the uh, generator thing that we were looking at earlier. What it does is actually build a new plugin. So you get a plugin in its own directory in your plugin directory. Okay. So, and then that's a framework that you can use to build as many blocks as you want. Uh, my own custom yeah, so yeah. Right, right, exactly. So the first step is to get your architecture in place so that you can build blocks. And so that's why we use the generator. And so like we could call it some cool image block or whatever, okay. right? And uh, and then we go in here and actually start carving that out. So the plugin that you're in right now, this right. is where right. created the custom blocks? Yeah, so okay. the, the work camp block is what got generated. Okay. Um, so the actual block here, so this is our, our template code. When you run this, you get everything you see here, the block.js, that's our block. So that's our template and entry point for where you would start doing customization. So you know you would give it a name, something relevant, an icon, category. So, and these keywords are, if you come up here and were to search for something, you know, um, so just that part right there gets you this far where you can have a block on here and then you go from there 
and start customizing it. So we have our edit function. And you know, if you want one of the image there, you would have um, the image tag and. Um, uh, right. So. That blockjs is essentially the entire file. I can create multiple custom blocks, or do I create another? Yeah. Well, JS file? Yeah. So this particular architecture is set up so that um, this block. Uh, so you would basically duplicate this directory. Okay, so duplicate so okay. each block would be as its own subcomponent okay. here. Okay. And so so this blocks.js file and see how it imports this file. Mm -hmm. So this is the file that actually gets built. Okay. And so um, time. Oh, more questions. Um yeah. Uh so so yeah, this compiles and it actually outputs all the code into this file. Um, there's a production build command too that outputs minified code, um, but in development you normally wouldn't do that. Um, so, so yeah, this is the uninteresting part and this is the, the part you actually want to work with. Okay. So, you know, we can just get rid of this and save it and that will change what this is here. Um, yeah. Any more questions? Yes. Do you have any kind of thoughts on moving from more of a kind of a lockdown advanced custom fields type of page template workflow and back end you know, kind of that workflow, having a bunch of advanced custom fields on a right. page, and then having the templates pulling those fields into the page, and very much of a... Um, so, so, yeah, that's still something that you can do. Um, so, the render function for blocks um, uh, can be dynamic, and you would actually have to set that with um, PHP. But so you can have it so that the block will render the PHP code dynamically. And so if you need to like reference attributes or field metas, um, like you could pull that in that way. So like so, some of the old approaches will still work. And um, I think advanced custom fields is also trying doing what they can to make it compatible um, with the meta box structure. So, um, so these are like our classic meta boxes, basically, and um, there's support for them. And if they're too complex, uh, those meta boxes need to be upgraded to blocks, basically. Um, anything else? Everybody good? Cool. Cool. Thank you, guys.